Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 36 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live now at the brand new times of 7pm in Europe, 6pm in the UK and 12 midday in Central US. If you miss the live stream, you can catch up with the whole show as I re-upload it every Sunday on my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis. Or you can check out the audio-only version, which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes, and on SoundCloud. If you enjoy the audio version, please leave, it, uh, leave us a review. It would really help us out. If you've got any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. So let me introduce you to the team if you're new to the show. First up, this guy recently gave me a tour of his virtual layer. I'm pleased to report that the Smeagol cave looked much nicer than I expected. It is, of <laughs> course, uh, Nathy. How you doing, dude? You all right? Doing all righty tighty. Did you did you like my Oculus room in, in the go? I was very impressed, actually. What I liked the most was the Ready Player One poster that was kind of split into three. That looked very nice indeed. I'm going to copy that and put that in my own little little Smeagol cave. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe you should. What else happened in that room there? Like, well, <laughs> wouldn't you like to know, Rowdy? We closed the door and then, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, the magic happened. <laughs> 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 so, uh, next up, someone should call the RSPCA on this guy because he should have a restraining order that doesn't allow him to have any pets. Because if he treats the way uh, pets the way he does in VR, then he just shouldn't be allowed. That's right. It is, of course, the rowdy guy. How you doing, dude? You all right? I'm all right, dude. I'm all right. And no, I don't treat my pets the way that I treat them. Actually, it were the people in the game that treated the pets so the pets so badly. I was just trying to, uh, like, accomplish their needs. I Wait guess. a minute. I, I saw a bit where you was holding a little furry creature over a flame. <laughs> that was only in the beginning. Only oh, in the right. beginning. <laughs> it didn't so happen that's okay. anywhere. That, 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 that's okay then. <laughs> So next up, our resident VR Twitch streamer, putting his mind, body, and soul on the line for science this week with the Oculus Go. It is, of course, ZimTalk5. How you doing, dude? You all right? Smile on my face, Mike. Every week, I every week you. I VR. <laughs> <laughs> how, is your, how is your right arm, by the way? Like, is it doing all right? Oh, yeah. Both arms are actually a little bit sore. I, I was yeah. expecting it from, like, Family Guy, where, like, Quackmire finally discovers the internet and the wonders that it has, and he comes outside with, like, this this huge arm, like... I was expecting this to be your, like... Yeah, yeah I, uh, I had a good week. <laughs> yeah. Zim, Zim turns up just a husk of a man, <laughs> just like husk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I digress. Uh, last but by no means least, myself, Mike, the host of the show from Virtual Reality Oasis. In today's episode, we've got a full show for you guys and girls. We're going to be talking about the Lenovo Mirage Solo headset. Uh, we look at how this headset stacks up to the newly released Oculus Go. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Tesla suit. Uh, will this be the only other suit you need other than your birthday suit? Well, Nathy will be telling us all about it. Uh, we're going to be talking about Red Matter. Is this the next big title coming to the Oculus Rift? Well, we'll soon find out. Uh, but first, let's find out what everyone's been up to in the metaverse this week. And uh, I really want to kick it over to Zim. First. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have you been up to uh, this week in VR, Zim? I'm intrigued. Well, Mike... I started the week playing um, Poker VR and uh, continuing to play Poker VR. Played it in various mm. formats. Played it in a tournament against Phil Helmuth, which was feckin' awesome. And like the last time we finished up, then I skedaddled over to to the tournament. Uh, I came last, but the game was feckin' amazing. The stream went really well, and I was just you know we, sitting around a table with, going to dinner with, and later streaming with. You know, one of the literally my favorite poker player in the world was awesome so that was a highlight not just of this year but like of many years going back if vr brought me to that table feckin a it was all worth it um aside from that i i uh did a few things in the oculus go uh i i enjoyed the browser app the browser app was quite quite interesting <laughs> it was but uh, yeah. <laughs> so for those who didn't catch it i uh, i released a video about uh porn and adult entertainment basically in the go which i think is quite uh, quite, it's quite a good and quite different from the other headsets in that in that respect. Um, but the games that I played, I played a bunch of rubbish actually that people had sent my way, like oh. Butterfly Moment. Now these games are like a pound on Steam, so they're like not very expensive. But you have butterflies flying around, and you have to capture them with a net. 
and then you um, level up by catching more and more and more butterflies and um that's basically it and then I, I got pissed off because there was a bit where i couldn't proceed past the level because i hadn't caught enough butterflies apparently 250 to unlock level five so, wow so stay stay away from stay away from butterfly effect and i i did like five or six of those kind of rubbish indie titles they're fun to play because they, they make good entertainment but uh yeah. the, the the last one i finished off Actually, Mike, when you were transitioning, when you said about the, the pet abuse, I thought that was going to be directed to me because I played Conrad the Kitten. And man, ah. I, took, I took the rear end of that cat and I shoved it on every sharp object I possibly could. Um, that was, <laughs> I was not a fan of that cat. And then I'm the one treating pets badly. Sorry, yeah, don't worry. I, I, that's I'm your like MO. I'm reporting Zim as well now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. But last night I finished off uh, Cave Digger. I know we're going to talk about that a bit later on. Uh, oh, so, you so, played so, it. So that was, cool. I finished it, actually. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was, awesome. it was, it was good. So that was me. Cool, cool. Yeah, nice, man, nice. So what about you, Nathie? What have you been up to this week, dude? So I played uh, the uh, Unfinished, like the, the second episode <laughs> of um, uh, Firebird. It's like an ah, yes. artistic uh, experience. It's it's not really a, a game. It's more like a adventure, you know? What platform that, is that, maybe? That's uh, Oculus uh, Home and uh, Steam as well, yes. So I can't yeah. really tell that much about the story because you need to experience it for yourself. But mm. if you like, let's say, art and you like mm. a good story and an inspiring one with mm. beautiful animations of people dancing together, and yeah. then, then this is the one for you. It, it, it's, yeah. it's a specific genre. It's not for everyone. But I think they, they are doing pretty, pretty well with with those chapters so far i think there is more coming soon and then i also played um well not really played i watched it uh, space explorers um by felix and paul studios uh, and it's mm. it's all about space exploration of the future people going to mars and as you guys may know like felix and paul are the are the best ones in 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 terms of like 360 video right yeah. i mean they always nail that stuff it, it's so good it works it just it's so smooth when you when you usually watch a 360, uh, mm -hmm. then you're going all over the place. But with this one, the the audio syncs up so nicely with with the, the the video itself that you're always looking into the right direction because the the the, the sounds are are just pointing you into yeah. the place you need to like look at. You know, so yeah. that's what I've been doing. I was more looking into the more like experiences, things yeah. I can watch instead of really always play something you know so yeah they, they're very very nice it's interesting uh felix and paul also did uh jurassic world blue which is on yeah, the go yeah. and it's one of those experiences that i've been showing people as a first experience to check out the go because it's a really good 360 video um yeah. and has the uh, the velociraptor blue from the jurassic world movie uh and it's a really it's really short but very polished and you also get a real sense of some 3d depth there with yeah the well that's exactly it they they know exactly how to bring that that 3d aspect to to vr um yeah. you can also watch the jurassic <laughs> one uh on, on pc by the way so if you don't have a go then you can also just uh watch it on on pc and yeah. i think there's another chapter of a jurassic uh, uh world coming like you can only watch yeah. the, the first chapter. It's the same with Space Explorers. You can watch New Dawn right now. That's like the first chapter, and there's another one coming soon. But that one took around 20 minutes to like finish. So that was uh, was a, a pretty long and, and decent uh, experience. It was like around three dollars. So yeah. yeah. That. And, and, and talking briefly, going back to uh, is it the Unfinished Swan? Is that the, what it's called? No, so so uh, 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 you had Fire Firebird is basically the the, the name of the of the the, the series, yeah. and then um, every episode has its own like name, and and the first one was called uh, uh, La Perry, right. and and the second one is called uh, the Unfinished. Right, but I they are I... really really like uh, connected with each other. They they use the same style. I think that La Perry was much better than than the second episode because there wasn't that much interaction. But yeah. it's not really a, an ongoing story. It's more like uh, what they do with uh, Black Mirror, for example. You got right. more stories in, in one kind of like style. and Yeah. Um, I remember playing one and it was uh, like a, a, st a couple of statues. Is that, is that the one where you sort of chip away, yes. you, they break yes. free? And then it, it was almost like going to the theater, you know, and watching like the ballet or something. It was yeah, that. Well, that sort of yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, it, yeah. it was a mix yeah. of a, a ballet performance, a classic one, yeah. and Night at the Museum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all I can say. Exactly. And when I watched it, I did find it the, the combination of the music and the ballet dancers and the visuals very kind of moving. It's quite it's emotional. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it is. Beautiful. And um, I, I actually contacted the developers and said, you know, I was very impressed with the, the motion capture because they've clearly motion captured the, the ballet's artists. And they've obviously had some really talented artists involved in it because, mm. you know, the, the, the moves they did were just like phenomenal. Um, but, yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, some sort of like arty thing, then, yeah, definitely, as Nathie said, I'd go, yeah. and, go and check it out. Mm. Yeah. So um, so what about you, Rowdy? What have you been up to this week, dude? I've actually played a lot of uh, VR games this week. Uh, not really anything that, that is really worth mentioning since I've played like some older titles. I've played uh, uh, some Pavlov with Viper. I've played um, some Once Again, uh, trying like some new builds. And then I've played the title that we've already talked about before. That was a Rolling Line. I had a lot of fun with that. Mm -hmm. uh, the only title is maybe something that's a little bit more under the radar was uh, Escape from uh, Horror Station, which was uh, basically like the next uh, part of like Downward Spiral or like more like the full version because the, the first one was more like a prologue. Right. And then uh, another really neat thing that I did this week was... Um, like of course i played some oculus go content but i actually let my colleagues at my workplace uh play some oculus go content and uh, they absolutely loved it they they, they tried the, a roller coaster i think it's called epic roller coasters or something it's a it's a it's a paid no it's uh, combat coasters that's how it's called combat right, uh, right. coasters and um it's a, a very simple because for me it, it doesn't really have that much appeal anymore roller coaster just because you know we're so used to playing virtual reality games and we expect already so much. For them, it, it blew their mind away. Like there was this this one girl put it on, and uh, she was screaming the entire way through, <laughs> like, like like screaming on the top of her lungs. That like even like the other lab came outside to see what was happening. She was, she, and she was having a good time and not screaming in fear. She was screaming because she was having so much fun. And uh, we, we, well, we kept on putting her in there because she absolutely loved it. And <laughs> I think in, in total, I sold like maybe four headsets to those people <laughs> just because they, they all were like, they couldn't believe the prize either. Like, uh, <clears throat> it was so, it was such a nice, such a nice thing. Yeah. yeah. I think that is really very impressive. So I've got a question for you all then before we move on to what I played. Um, you know, when you demo the go to people, like what's your go to application to show people off? Like you said, you, cho you chose like uh, Coast of Combat. Like it's quite an intense no, actually, game. Like I Coast of Combat is, right? I actually, I didn't choose that one because right, I was right. also like, let me just pick like some things that like a little bit more yeah, laid I back. So I, cho I chose like some of those. Uh, how is that called again? That animation kind of thing with the little bunny invasion. Uh, and that's my go-to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's invasion. the thing. I thought like you know I'm gonna I'm gonna show that, and they were like, oh yeah, that's that's nice, that's nice, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know I can't really do anything. They were like, and I was like, yeah, I mean, it's like you know let's take it easy in the beginning. It's like oh, no, no, no. I've I've seen so many people like do like roller coasters. Don't you have any roller coasters? Say so, yeah, I do. But I mean, if if you feel any motion sickness, get it off immediately. But yeah. none of, there was one girl that was a little bit more queasy, but she also got motion sick in real roller coasters. So it's maybe not the real thing, the the right thing to do it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. none of them actually got really motion sick. That's good. And the other thing that they really liked. Um, which I think is one of the main features for the Oculus Go as well, was just Oculus Rooms and Netflix. Yeah. Uh, the so media cool. entertainment app. So they, they just checked that out. Like, I, I don't have a Netflix account, so I couldn't show them a, a Netflix movie or something. Yeah. Um, but just putting that on, and they, you could see their imagination going wild. And so, wait, I can just put anything that I have on my, on my computer on here? So, yeah, yeah, you can put anything on the screen. But it looks like I'm sitting in like a really nice living room. It's like, yeah, yeah, wow. that's that's virtual reality. And they were they were blown away. And when I said that other people could join in that room as well in yeah. the Oculus rooms, they were like, how how, how come I didn't know this? And I I need this. There was even one guy whose wife actually lives on another continent, and they're not oh, thinking wow. of both getting oh. one. Oh, yeah. And then uh, uh, watching a movie together. They yeah. even sometimes cook together that they make the same meal. Yeah. So now they can do that in virtual reality yeah. and they can watch the same oh movie my as well. It's blowing. Like, Next that to each other. It is the best way, hands down, yeah. to yeah. communicate with each other yeah. that way. It is yeah. so simple and works so well. And sharing content with each other that way as well uh, yeah. just works flawlessly. Um, and like you yeah. say, watching Netflix, um, like I, I thought like, I'd try it out. I, I wasn't that interested, but I thought I'd give it a go. And I watched uh, Valerian, uh, the movie, uh, which is like yeah. a sci-fi movie. It. 
it's a really cool movie by the way if you haven't checked mm-hmm. it out it's worth checking out they've got like a really cool augmented reality kind yeah, of scene, yeah. The, the one in the market right yeah, the market yeah. scene yeah it's, it's really very cool great. it's very cool um and i just lied there reorient- reoriented the uh, screen so it was kind of like right in my sort of field of view and i was just lying there and the girl obviously is so comfortable with the straps at the back because so they're just like nice. material and uh, I just loved it. Like wearing headphones, uh, I was just so immersed into the movie. Yeah. No distractions. Really enjoyed the movie, and I just think it's like such a great experience and such a great yeah. way to experience movies. Um, yeah, yeah, I really, really enjoyed the one, it. The one thing I'm I'm a little nervous of, Mike, is that I've been so because it's so easy to slip on and slip off. I, I walk around with it on, like looking yeah. through the nose hole and stuff. I know I'm going to affect myself up doing it, but I do that. Does anyone else in chat so, do so that? It's going to be I like, you know, driving in this car, realizing, uh, nah, that, this is really not the right way to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you, really, you really get addicted to that thing. You know, it's like when you, when you use a phone, you want to use it when you're sitting on a bicycle, when you're doing this and doing dangerous things. And it's the same with a go. You just, when you... Uh, are like joining up with friends you don't want to leave them anymore yeah yeah <laughs> that's so that's how this it is week, um the game that i played that i really want to talk about is a go title actually and uh, if you own an oculus go you owe it to yourself to go and check this game out and i'd recommend it to you guys as well and it's called virtual virtual reality and when i first heard of it i was like what the heck what is this like thing and uh when i played it i was just like this is actually really, really great. So the reason why no one's really heard of this game is because it was originally just a Google Daydream exclusive title. Right. And it came out like over a year ago and then won a load of awards for being like such a great uh, game and a great experience. And I would kind of describe it as a mix of like Portal meets like accounting VR, like the, the humorous side of it, and then Inception because you go sort of like deeper, 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 yeah. like layers deep of VR. <laughs> Um, and it has a really basic premise, like in the future, like basically AIs have taken over and humanity just are their servants, basically. They still like the companionship of a human. So you are basically like their slave <laughs> and you have to try and please them. They're, they're your clients. So you have to try and please them Sounds to like get like, thing, Mike. This is good. And I wasn't really expecting this like wacky kind of game, but like in the first one, like to give you an example, you're in this room and then this, this little voice goes, Hey, over here, I'm in here, open up the door. So you open up the door and it's just like a stick of butter. And he, he's like, yeah, now now you have to do what I say. He goes, now, now now make sure you get, like, the toast and make sure it's nice and crispy and then just stick it in me. <laughs> and, and then you get, like, a, a rating on how, how well you do it. But it's got some really funny, like, voice acting in it. And the humor is really great. And it's probably, like, a two-and-a-half-hour, three-hour sort of playthrough. But I would recommend actually playing it standing up because uh, you can turn 360 and then you can teleport using the controller. So it actually felt like a proper proper vr game you know like a like a pc vr game yeah, a lot of people are surprised about that actually that the mm. oculus go has titles that are actually really good quality since yeah. i mean to be fair like a lot of the games that all of us play on, on on our rift and our vive are games that are not that graphically intense or are not that amazing either yeah. and the oculus go actually pulls it off and and making experiences or games that are actually on a fairly equal level compared to the Rift and the Vive. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying Skyrim and Fallout and all of those no. titles, of course, but there's a lot of content yeah. that, that is being played a lot. That is yeah. also on, but I also think on that because, the, because the, the Go has its limitations in a way compared to PC, you need to be more creative. So developers really need to think about what they really want to make. Well, on yeah. PC, you can be a kind of like, oh, you know what? With my eyes closed, I just make something. Well... You need to yeah. really think about what you want to do, you know? Yeah, Which exactly. might be an advantage because I've seen a lot of people on like the social media and on Twitter yeah, and like so. just discrediting the Oculus Go is not like, you know, uh, I'm not interested because, you know, it can't compare it to the Rift and the Vive, which in part is true. I mean, you can't compare it to the Rift and the Vive, but the content that is on there mm-hmm. up to this point has been yeah. actually fairly surprisingly good. Yeah, exactly. And and virtual virtual reality is um is a mobile exclusive game. So you're only going to play this on Daydream and on the Go and the Gear VR. So uh, you can't actually play it on Rift. That, um, that but the great thing is super super uh, incentivizing though. You know because it, even I I like discounted it when I first got into the Go. And then you realize mm. how much of a sea there is that's there that's untouched. And for us yeah. who like saturate ourselves in playing pretty much everything that's there, 
That just feels so yeah. cool. It's like you're going into a candy shop. You're like, fucking hey, I can just take all this stuff off the shelves and play with it. So <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So good. There is some, there is some real disappointing titles in there as well, though. Oh, like, yeah. uh, I played um, Micro Machines because I thought like Micro Machines would be really cool because oh, uh, I really liked uh, Blaze Rush. Um, whoa, 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 and it was just did you play so Blaze bad. Rush on the go or did you play it on PC? Because those got to oh, be both. different. No, no, no. It's, it's like no word of a lie. Playing Blaze Rush on the go with a controller is like the same experience practically but you can't get close good. to the like you can't get your head closer no, of to course the of course right? not of course not no and it's the same with kin but i would say that the, again playing kin on the go is comparable with playing it on the rift as okay. well but, okay. but driving driving a tiny car with like a touchpad is that really that nice compared no, he, to he, he meant a controller, controller X, xbox controller that's what i meant oh yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah you can use that yeah. too yeah. I, yeah, I, I was like uh, thinking of a small remote there. yeah yeah like i would <laughs> never use that to play blaze rush no but oh, okay. uh, yeah it's, it's a great one to check out if you've got a, a controller uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend Virtual Virtual Reality. You should check it out. It's, it's a ton of definitely fun. Um, so let's move on to some quick news before we get into the main topic. So uh, first up on the quick news is Star Trek uh, Next Generation is coming to Star Trek Bridge Crew. So uh, Bridge Crew is getting a big update soon. Uh, the next uh, generation will give players access to a new bridge, which is the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D. So for, for like Star Trek elitists, <laughs> they all know what that means. Like for me, it doesn't re really mean much, but they'll be like, oh, oh, right. Yeah, nice. Mike um, is like, yeah, that's, a, that's another yeah. UFO from uh, Star Trek, you know? Yeah, from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll, I'll get flamed now. Um, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so you, you get to ride on like basically the Enterprise from Star Trek The Next Generation. Also, you get to obviously wear the classic uniforms that go with that era. Um, also, there's a new role which uh, replaces the role of the engineer in Star Trek Bridge Crew, if you've ever played it. Uh, and that will be uh, called Operations. And they're basically ah. like focused on like crew management. Um, but alongside the new ship, uh, Ubisoft are also adding sort of uh, more uh, bits and pieces to the procedurally generated missions to give them a bit more variety. Uh, also, there'll be new enemies. So you're going to be up against like the, the Borg now and the Romulans, oh, which are obviously iconic uh, em uh, enemies from uh, the series. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a big update. I'm surprised that they're investing a lot of time and energy into it, though, because I think Star Trek Bridge Crew is a little bit dead now. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while uh, since I, dr I dropped into it. But yeah, it's been, it it's been a while ago. Yeah, it took them a while to update it. I think if mm. they, they went a bit faster with their updates, it could have been way more interesting. Like yeah, showing I might, might, might drive new traffic in there because, um, I mean, it still has a, a pretty decent single player as well. Yeah. Right, right, but like multiplayer was really where it shone, and I just yeah, wonder if the community is still there. Like, are yeah. people re regularly still playing the game? That's yeah. nice. Unfortunately, I don't have any numbers for you. Of course, yeah, I'm sure it's it's very popular on the PlayStation because obviously they've got the biggest user base, so that maybe is where it shines. It's, it's not cr cross platform, right? Uh, it yeah. is, it is, it is. So oh, it is. Uh, you can play with PSVR players on the PC. Uh, ah. I remember when we played it back in the day, yeah, we were playing PSVR players back then. Yeah. I welcome uh, the new update because um, I think the one thing that Bridge Crew for me, it just felt very much like a very canned experience when you wanted something a bit more. And that's why I like From Other Suns mm -hmm. so much more because it, it gave Absolutely. it that flavor of like, here's a hole I can dig down into as deep as I want with my buddies. Whereas yeah. Bridge Crew felt very much like, I'll play it through once and then, that's kind yeah. of it. I, I did like it though. I'm not gonna lie. I like like I, I did like the, uh, like all the uh, that everyone had like, their specific role and that yeah. you had to like you know collaborate together and you had a captain that said oh you need to do this. That felt really uh, a I part agree. where like virtual reality can be really cool because I remember playing mm -hmm. that with Josh and Nathy and uh, and um, the VR vault. And we actually had a, a good time uh, in that one, just like messing around and trying to like, you know, to, to figure stuff out ourselves. Because we, we, of course, we didn't know everything. And, and I don't think any one of us actually watched Star Trek. But no. um, I, I kind of like that part of it a lot. Yeah, like, it's a shame because aspects. there isn't many games that have done something similar because it is a great formula, like you say, like that communication where you all have a role and you have to communicate to achieve the objective. Yeah. Uh, and also, it was, it was like if you jumped in the first time, you just had to do all of those tutorials because otherwise you had like no yeah. idea what you were doing. Yeah. And I kind of liked that part because yeah. if, they didn't like back down on that. They could have said like, oh, yeah, press a button and you fly there. But now yeah. you, you really had to like control all of those. And as an engineer, yeah. especially, you had to like all, manage all those systems. Yeah. Like, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. I especially, mean, go on, sorry, Nathan. Yeah, the, 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 I think, Mike, the better question is, how many games did you play so far in VR where you really feel responsible for 
your <laughs> teammates. You mm. know what I mean? Where mm. you really yeah. feel the teamwork, but also feel responsible. And 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 poor you know? Josh. So I think that's that's something that that doesn't happen that much right now. Yeah. Uh, like it's 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 a rare thing you you can mm. play. I mean, Star Trek does it does it well, and and I'm sure others also do that. But there are not that many coming out lately, at least. Uh, it's, it's it's especially fun if you've got an animated captain as well. Like I played it with uh, PSVR Frank, and he's like an animated funny dude. And as a captain, he was just like <laughs> really like going to town on the role play of it. All, you know, he was he was loving it. So it was great to play with someone like that. But that's a bit what uh, it is, right? It's it, its strength is actually that that role play. I think is oh, is course. its strength. Yeah. Because if the four yeah. people are in the seat, even if there's nothing happening, you're not even on a mission, you could have fun. Like that yeah, group of, of friends can have yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 So uh, the update is uh, coming on the 22nd of May uh, for PC, VR, non-VR, and uh, PlayStation VR. Uh, and it's going to be 11 99 in British pounds, which equates to around sort of $15. Um, if you're interested and you're a Star Trek fan and you're into VR, I would also say you owe it to yourself to check out the episode of Black Mirror, uh, which is called uh, USS Callister. Mm. And it basically is kind of like Star Trek Bridge Crew, but like the super dark side of it. <laughs> it's a really, really cool episode. I definitely recommend going and checking it out. It's available on Netflix. It's um, a really cool one. I it like is that. really cool. It's really dark, but really cool. Uh, so moving on to uh, the next quick news is a title. If you're looking for a nice little hidden gem to play. Oh, God. You can dig deep into the Steam uh, library and, and find Cave Digger. Someone shoot him already. Please put me out of his misery. <laughs> So, uh, puns aside, Cave Digger is a fun little game where you basically go down into a mine shaft on an elevator. Uh, you can pick up uh, an axe and various sort of mining tools and sort of mine for gold, priceless stones and some oil as well. And then what you do is you, you gather all those priceless items together and then you sell them to buy better mining equipment and then just rinse and repeat, go back down, mine some more. And uh, it looks like it's got some really fun mechanics and a really cool like sort of X-ray tool where you can scan the environment to see where these like precious uh, stones are um it almost feels like a steam world dig but in first person vr yeah. right yeah, yeah. Um, yeah very much like that but what what struck me is that like uh you know it, it seems like a really polished game but it's completely free yeah on steam so for oculus for for vive for windows mixed reality um so you've got to check this out yourself and you said you've you completed it zim right i did yeah yeah so there's um i I won't talk to the end of the game because I think there's there's a lot of you know playing the game is is really good. It wasn't super long. I think I beat it in about an hour, hour and a half. But okay. the Wait, there's a story to it. The digging mechanic is great because in the video you you, you probably don't you can't tell. Uh, there is a story driven by the. It's very much like um, Elevator to the Moon. There's a dude who's got like oh. a, an overly bassy voice who's giving you this kind of update, and it's 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 really nice because when you're digging. Like, it's very much like SteamWorld Dig. It's a great um, example that you gave there, Mike, because when you're digging in dirt, right, you, you dig through in maybe three hits. When you're digging through stone, it takes maybe 10. And you really do have to chip away at these things. And every time you're at a segment of the mine, you're on a timer of like 30 seconds. So you've got to, probably 60 seconds, actually. You've got to go around your little uh, craft, either scanning or carving to the ro rock or digging a hole and trying desperately to grab oil. Like, it's great. So you, there's this kind of like, you're almost up against an arcade scoreboard of yourself, trying to out best yourself so you can get better tools for next time. And the thing just keeps escalating. Um, and there is a brilliant thing in the game. All I can say is you can eat magic mushrooms and serious shit goes down. Like, stuff happens. <laughs> if you, if you, like, hey, this game is free. I, like I would easily pay 10 or 15 pounds for this. This is, it's really and worth why, it. Why, why did they release this for free? Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm not lost. complaining though, but I, I, Paradise Decay is saying in the chat that the developer is planning on paid content. Yeah, exactly. Oh, cool. um, so I did Great. some research about the game and uh, looked up on Steam, and there was, there was that question asked exactly, like, how how do you make this game for free? And the developers replied, and they said, uh, we survive on the fruits of happiness and love from our players. Uh, on a more serious mm -hmm. note, though, uh, we're planning to release paid DLC in the future. Smart. We wanted to bring okay. the main version of the game to okay. be available for everyone. We think it's a quality product, and the best way to show that and build credibility as developers is to get as many people to play smart. it as possible. Yeah, it's very so, smart. Um, Building like a community first and then yeah. start selling something. Milk them yeah. Milk them afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a very interesting business model, but I think it's a cool one, and I really hope it works out for him. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's, it's worth playing then as well, if it was, if it was paid. Yeah, I, I would pay a tenner for it, easy. 
Easy. Even even in the small package that is right now, because it's so well, it's so polished. The only thing that I would say bug wise is with the oil collection, it didn't quite work for me because the bucket was just the handle. And I'm like trying to capture the oil is spilling all over my hand and stuff and it's not going to the bucket. I was like super frustrated. <laughs> but um, there's there's so many different things. Like you can you can mine for ore, you can collect oil. Um, what else can you do? You can obviously take the, the, the stone saw and cut you have to cut like smartly through the rock and stuff, otherwise you break what you're trying to dig after. So it's like right. and then there's the TNT bit where you like you literally drill a hole, you plug it with TNT, you light it, and it explodes. And then like that feeling of like I need to scramble to grab all the bits that I've just mined before the gates shut and it brings me to the next level. Cause then there's like little holes on the bottom of the, the mine shaft cart thing that you're riding up and down on the shaft. And all your gems that you haven't picked up and thrown down the tube disappear. They all, all just basically fall down the holes. So it's like this scramble of wow. mine it, pick it up, dump it like, and, and use the right tool set. So it's great. It's great. That was yeah. So there you go. You can go and pick that up for free right now on Steam. Uh, so go, yeah, check, go check it out. So let's move on to our first topic then of today, and that is the Lenovo Mirage Solo headset. So this is available now to pre-order. Lots of press and friends of the show have had opportunity to get their hands on the device and check it out. And essentially, it's a standalone headset. So there's no need for a PC. There's no need for a smartphone. Just like the Oculus Go, everything you need is in the headset itself. But this headset sets itself apart from the Oculus Go in that it's got six degrees of freedom in the headset, but it's still limited to a three degrees of freedom controller. So essentially what that means is, um, you know, if you've got it on your head, you can move uh, left and right, up and down, but you can all, all, also move forward and backwards in 3D space. So your head is tracked. Uh, wow. And it does this by using two front-facing cameras, uh, which uses like inside-out tracking, uh, similar to what the Windows Mixed Reality headsets use uh, in their sort of tracking. Uh, Lenovo obviously have their own Windows Mixed Reality headset, which is the uh, Lenovo Explorer, mm. but you'd need a PC for that one. But this is completely standalone. So this is kind of uh, the Go's competition, essentially, and and, uh, sort of stacking up as well to the the uh, Vive Focus, uh, which uh, Nathy recently got to try out as well. Uh, but uh, the uh, the Mirage Solo is based on Android, so just like the Oculus Go, but this is uh, on the Google Daydream platform. So it's using Daydream as its kind of uh, software that it's going to run. Mm -hmm. um, it has the same resolution display as the Go, which is a single LCD panel, uh, but the Mirage Solo runs at 75 hertz all the time. So it's got a slightly faster refresh rate in the uh, display because the Go runs at 60 hertz natively and then boosts up to 72 hertz in some applications and games. Right. Um, to sort of push that higher refresh rate and also you know, to control the inside out tracking, it does have a faster processor. Uh, it's using the Snapdragon 835, uh, whereas the Go uses an older version, which is the 821. Um, and it features kind of like a PSVR kind of head strap you know you, you yeah. kind of rests on the top of your head and it's got like a wheel at the back that kind of clamps it to your head a bit a, like a the quick, quick poll here guys i've always wondered this does, does, does the snapdragon numbers mean anything to any of you no so like basically <laughs> what it means is in layman's terms is they're using a newer and faster processor than the go yeah. uh it is a more expensive processor as well so oh, uh we'll we'll okay. talk more about the price later on because uh, yeah. I think price is a big factor in this. Like, you know, it's got all this Huge. fancy stuff. The biggest, maybe, even. But also, yeah, well, I got a question, oh, Mike, sure. because I, 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 I checked this video out earlier. Uh, this is the, probably the only mobile headset that I haven't played with. But it, does it have an external camera? Uh, no. What's, what's uh, that little the, box? Yeah, what like is a little that, white uh, box uh, that like just sits little... beside it. What is that? Yeah. So what they've developed is a, a 180 camera. So it's a 180 stereoscopic camera. So you can take pictures and movies oh. And film essentially like a small VR movie with it oh, if God. you want to. Does that come bundled with it? No, it's a separate purchase. Right. Um, but the thing is with the the Daydream, uh, with, sorry, the Le Le Lenovo Mirage Solo headset is that say you could take the SD card out of that camera and you could put it in the headset because it does have an SD card slot. And then you could watch your your, your sort of home VR movies in the headset. That is interesting. Mm. I, I, I like the idea of having some gadgets with... The, the, the headset itself if that's a 180 camera or something else i mean that that could be interesting as long as they don't bundle it because then the yeah, price, exactly. price goes up again and then people are like yeah, yeah you know what yeah. Just keep do you actually um do you have access to like the content that we have for the oculus go no, like uh, oculus so... rooms or no. none of that 
So you, th this is the biggest problem I think they're yes. going to face because um, the Go has this huge library that, it, that established itself from Gear VR, right? And not many people, well, I, I still think a lot of people use Gear VR, but now like everyone's using it on the Go as well. It's got this library already. Um, whereas the Daydream platform has had Daydream itself, but it, it never really, I don't think in my mind, took off. So it doesn't have that sort of library of games to back it up. And I think that's, that's going to be its biggest problem. So important. Like having played like the Pico, Goblin and uh, the Neo, I mean, if you don't have the games, feck it, what's the point? It's just yeah. like a big yeah. piece of plastic that you paid. I, I think that we talked thing. about. I think we talked about this uh, a while back as well. Like the, the main advantage that Oculus Go has is that it's backed by Oculus. So it has Oculus Studios, who has already made like several yeah. really good titles, and they're now making like like we we discussed that last time. Like if you have both the hardware and the software in your own in your own little mm -hmm. company. It's very easy to develop quality content, and yeah. with all these other headsets that okay, they're running Daydream, and okay, they have access to like you know a lot of the of the of the apps that you can also use in Oculus Go, but yeah. none of them have that backing no. from a major studio. No. But also, it has experience in making games. I mean, I mean, Oculus has been around for such a long time. Well, the rest now needs to catch up. Plus, mm -hmm. Oculus always kept standalone in mind. They have been building a library before it is even like launched That's in the first mean. place. Yeah. They, yeah. they they have like two or th almost like three years of 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 mobile stuff already yeah. for their library. You know, $299. so I mean, ninety nine dollars. Someone just said that the camera is two hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> so that's the camera. That's just the camera. That's the camera. That's the camera on its own. Oh so before God. we move on to the price, like uh, talking about content, so there isn't actually any content available right now that takes advantage of this six degrees of freedom in the headset. So this is the the problem. Like you can play games like virtual virtual reality, like I mentioned earlier, because it was a daydream game uh, originally uh like elevated to the moon is on there like snowballs uh, the christmas snowballs game is on there but there's not a huge library of games and that is a big problem and especially because there's nothing that really takes advantage of the technology you just think well why am i spending that extra money to get this technology if it's yeah. not being used to its full potential Rowdy. we just have uh, chris richardson saying that the oculus has a browser and lenovo doesn't so there's so no browser in the in the headset I, I find that difficult to believe because it's yeah. a Google headset and like that's their that's their bread and butter. So <laughs> that's like, that's one of the main they, they must things have you Chrome, want to have. But Chrome I have to say, the, uh, the, uh, the, Google, Google has confirmed that Chrome is coming to the device right. early launch to take the wind out of uh, Oculus Go release anyone. Yeah, yeah. but like right. what I was going to say is the, the way the browser works in the Go, once yeah. you've entered your details or whatever, I can tweet from there. I can, you know, yeah. I can watch even even things that aren't supported by apps. Like um, I'm an Amazon Prime guy as opposed to Netflix. I can watch those videos in there. Like yeah. the, the accessibility to web through the Go is just, it feels so natural. And there, yeah. there's loads of things you can do. And this is the thing, like I think in the design as well, like just, uh, just talking about the design of the, the Daydream uh, headset, the Lenovo Solo, uh, is that it's got no built-in audio. So unlike oh. the Go, where, where you've got these like awesome sounding, uh, you know, uh, speakers coming straight yeah. through the, uh, the head strap, you know, you don't need headphones. Obviously, headphones you can use, well, and they, it'll give you that they, better it, experience. It, it's just clear but, that they are trying to catch up here. They they didn't have enough time to make an actual like the Go is in development for such a freaking long time. Well, mm -hmm. this stuff yeah. is, is is around for for. I don't know how long, but not as long also, as um, they have been working on the go. So they are they need to bring something on the market that is maybe a half-baked pro uh, product or something that is missing features mm -hmm. that people now think are standard on the go, you know? So, But yeah. I, I think this will yeah. change later down the road. What I hope is that um, things will get cross-platform because yes, okay, it's nice to have a go and play with your friends on a go, but trust me, later on, people are going to buy different headsets too where uh, people say like, uh, hey, uh, well, that rowdy guy has a has a rare uh, Android, and and the rest has an iPhone, <laughs> and and then you still no want to play together, you know. Um, yeah. But so people have their own we, brands, and now to go is like the main, you know. But main contender. Apparently, apparently Chris has a, has a, a Lenovo headset, and he also says that the Oculus works perfectly in the dark, but the Lenovo has cameras that he uses for tracking. If you turn off the lights. Then it will send the ceiling uh, to a random location. 
that's a problem that's a huge okay. problem a huge because problem. you know like I, like i say the other night i was laying down in bed watching the go all the lights were off my wife was asleep i was just enjoying the movie valerian with my headphones on and yeah. i don't i don't think you're going to be able to do that if that's the problem like well, with the lights he, off he also says that he has tracking issues even in just low low light living rooms so mm. not yeah. even but the, the tracking on the go is but so I mean, good the go is you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you guys have mm -hmm. found it. I am surprised at how perfect it is. Like, this. I have noticed some drafts sometimes, though. Some, 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 some yes, drift. Yes, there is some drift, sometimes. but I think that you can't without six degrees of freedom tracking. You can't get that. But what what I mean is, like, if you're just in the home environment, right, and you're looking your head around or whatever, I, I think mm -hmm. I've never noticed it. Not. Yeah, but, but is he is he talking movement. about tracking issues like like positional wise or or just just looking around in the first place? Because if your head is on a stick like the go has mm. then nothing is really going to happen it's it's an easy yeah. way of tracking your your head movements yeah and the, but the thing is if if the if the, the ceiling is changing he was saying that's going to happen whether you're lying down sitting up standing moving yeah, whatever then, then, he's, then he's talking about positional tracking basically yeah. Yeah. Because that's the thing, like it, it needs light to see where it's going. Like mm -hmm. I think I, I've never tried to buy focus uh, uh, while closing everything. But yeah, of course, it doesn't see anything. So yeah. weird stuff is going to happen. <laughs> so, so weirdly as well, like, um, apparently, this, although this tracking does work, you know, you can move your head forwards and backwards. And apparently it's not as jarring for people that are new to VR, because I don't know if you guys noticed it, but when you put on the go and you, you're used to that, forward and back movement in the rift it can be a little bit disorientating at first and then you kind of get used to like the way that it works especially right? mike if you're walking across your living room with the yeah, thing yeah, on exactly. in an app uh... exactly <laughs> um but that but that's basically all, almost the only thing that this six degrees of freedom is used for to make it more comfortable because yeah. apparently it's only got like a, a meter or so tracking radius and then when you go ab ab beyond that then it just uh it, it fades to black the display fades to black to say that you're reaching a boundary and you shouldn't uh, go any further it, it, it's funny though it depends on, on on what you play i guess because i've seen someone from upload trying it out while walking into a garden like a couple That's of right. meters and it, and it did work but there are games and experiences that have yeah. safe boundaries that you know well, what that guy did from upload was actually he went into the developer settings it's kind of hidden away and disabled oh, the boundary systems yeah, and then he was able to do that um the that's, uh, that's, that's actually where the the um uh the the, the pico neo um actually allows infinite you can just walk you can just walk with it yeah um which yeah. is kind of neat but again what software is going to really take advantage of that yeah, but I, I, just, yeah. I just thought it would be a good thing if we just touched on like you know the go we've we've had it for like a week now right one thing i wanted to talk about in terms of issues i've had with it is white flicker. So I don't know if it's, it's related mm. to the, the resolution, so not the resolution, the uh, frequency of the, the, um, of the display, yep. which is of course 60 pumped to 72 at times. But I've noticed yep. that in certain apps where you get a straight white background, it's a yep. noticeable flicker as if you were staring into like a fluorescent bulb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, and uh, I've heard people say that as well uh, about white scenes. It's not something that I was susceptible to myself, but I have seen people say the same thing. And my wife is, said, is this... sorry, go ahead, Nathan. Is that something you, because I haven't really played that much with the Go yet, but is that something you, you really need to focus on to see it and, it and it keeps on coming back? Or is it something that... It's quite you know, in your face. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason I say okay. it is because I noticed it when we were first uh, demonstrating uh, on the Go, uh, demonstrating the uh, Poker VR app, and their, their, their launch screen is like pure white, and then it goes to kind of yeah. like a milk white and has confetti come down. And as that's all happening, it's it's a relative flicker. And then I noticed it in some of the, the default apps, like um, mm. I think in browser sources as well, and a couple of other games that were loading, like like Invasion we talked about earlier, which is one right. of my go-to apps. Yep. Thinking about it, actually, the, as you were talking there, I did think about it, and I did experience it in big screen. Um, the loading uh, screen in big screen is like a real... Yeah bright yeah. blue and mm -hmm. I, I did notice it there actually I um, and i think it's one of those things that you kind of uh if it's a really bright vibrant scene and it's all the same color then yeah. maybe you're gonna you're more likely to, to experience it, it. But, yeah, i noticed yeah. it primarily on single color scenes but i was wondering mm -hmm. for people i wonder if we've got any viewers who are uh trigger epileptic because i wondered mm -hmm. if that frequency you know would trigger anyone because it, yeah, it seems be to be on that there's no yeah. i don't think there's any warnings as far as i've seen in the go when you went in and it says warning this could cause wow. you know what i mean so but i i don't, I don't think the flicker is that um that intensive enough to actually cause an epileptic attack 
Well, it's gonna be different. It's, it's different that, per person. So it's more with like strobe lights and uh, and 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 those kind of things that I think that that you have more. But of course, if if you're photosensitive, then even watching uh, like a PlayStation or whatever, a, a game or like yeah. it, it can yeah. always cause like in some scenes uh, an epileptic attack. Well, but yeah. So quickly, just going back to the Mirage solo, um, because I just wanted to talk about the strap in particular more, because uh, initially when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I kind of like the strap because, you know, the PSVR is pretty comfortable and a lot of people really sort of say like the PSVR is a really comfortable headset and it is. But But having had the go now and lying down in bed wearing it, you're not going to be able to do that with this headset, man. Like, seriously, it's going to be like... The back is going to be the issue here then. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and and the other thing that you know you touched on it, Zim, was that you know using the browser whilst lying down is is a really great experience. And I was thinking like for people that are in hospital and things like that, like eventually these are going to be used for that kind of applications where people can't leave a bed or whatever. You know, it, it just works so well. Um, it's one of my issues though. Um, so it's one of my biggest disappointments so far, and I don't know if there's an answer to it. I think Mike, you said that big screen allows it, but in the standard applications, the the fixed horizon in the Go does not permit you to reset your horizon. So if you want to lie down and play a game you know, on your back, I don't think no. you can. Uh, and, no, you can't. And that, as I said, if you're on a, in a bed and you're stuck yeah. there for six months or six years yeah. or whatever, yeah. why can't you experience the content? But I do think the point you made about the strap, right? When I yeah. first looked at the Go, I thought, oh, that's a pretty cheap looking strap. This is so easy to put on. My four-year-old mm. instantly knew how to put it on. It was like, boom, in, right? And then it just holds it and it, it does really, because it's elastic, the only issue is a year from now, this yeah. is probably going to need to go on the yeah. bed, right? Yeah. But it's easy to replace, but it probably will stretch to the point where... I, I think yeah. I think the reason why they, they went for that, that, that dial on the back is because these uh, headsets are uh, there to, to move with as well. And that's why the, the straps are stronger. Well, with the Go, yeah. you're sitting or standing, but it's a standing mm-hmm. experience. You're not going to move around. And when you start moving around and do something more physical... Then you want to have a more stronger strap. I mean, but, but not, not really, because the um, the straps itself on the side of the go, you can tighten them very, very tight as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if, but, if it, it replaces, it's, it's just the convenience of like turning a knob yeah. and like taking it off, and like it's more convenient to be turning a knob than to be doing this kind of stuff. The, also, the thing is, by the by the very nature, these headsets are designed to be taken around with you, right? And that's the problem yeah. with the the Lenovo is that because of the strap, it adds bulkiness to it, so you're not going to be able to carry it around in it you're going to need a backpack twice yeah as well so the, also, it's uh, go on, Max, let's the talk thing about is, it because um sorry. go on go on rally go on before you uh, yeah the thing is like also you don't need any headphones for this well for that's... all the other ones you you still need them yeah yeah, that is a, that's a big, especially for only be laying down because I know they were saying in the chat by the way Zin, that uh, a lot of people in hospital bed they, they usually don't lay flat uh, which is true so they can still enjoy it but I think it's more like from like a, like an entertainment kind of thing that you want to lay down and you want to watch a movie and you just want to relax like that yeah. uh, it's nice to, to be able to do that but you can still do that in the in the go though but I think the thing with the Go for me that I, someone posted on Reddit and then I was like, this is such a game changer um, because on the Rift, you can't, you have the hard rails that are that are there, but the, the, the flexibility to actually move uh, the bars, mm-hmm. what it does is it changes the pressure allocation between your forehead and your face. Yeah, and it, I have them slightly super out. super comfortable. Yeah, I found about like yeah. 10 degrees up is like optimal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get so that balance. Done that. yeah, yeah definitely yeah. do it. It makes it super comfortable. So I think I still think it's it's pretty cool that Lenovo is is bringing a standalone headset because this means we we can expect a lot more because I'm I'm sure there are some companies out there that started developing a a standalone uh, well back I mean Lenovo seems to be in a hurry but I'm sure there are some others that took their time and really thought like okay this is going to be the next uh, thing to do so that, that's, that's the thing like going to be the one that really brings something you know all round as well yeah. I just think like I welcome the competition. Same with the the, the Vive Focus and this this as well and the Pico really Neo and and all these competition. I like the fact that there's competition in the marketplace. You know, I, I you know, but I just think the Oculus have come out the gates and they've come. You know what the competition really is though, Mike. We talked about them. Apple, right? Yeah, of course. Apple of is course. back there with an R&D yeah. product that you know is 20% better than everything else on the market. And yeah. Oculus know this, but I have to say, they're pa- from their packaging. Uh, to the actual device itself, the amount of like small tweaks that this thing answers for 200 bucks in, yeah. in an HMD, I, 
I am it, just it could also it could also be a total random company. I mean, we have seen what happened to Pimax. People can sometimes back something if if it's a really good idea. So yeah. you never know. You never I got know. a question actually on this because I was thinking earlier this would be good for a quick poll. You each got a hundred thousand dollars. You can invest that money in any uh, VR equipment or HMD. Where do you put that money right now, so that a year from now, you know, if that thing's done well. You know, it comes out. I don't know. There's like, like you say, it, it, it's probably going to be Apple. <laughs> you know, it, nah, it, 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 yeah. So I'd probably eighty twenty. Backers. I'd go eighty percent into like go developers. I'd find some good titles and like split it. You know, twenty thousand, twenty thousand, like that. And then I'd probably put another twenty k into Apple's pocket. That would be mm -hmm. me. But just quickly really? uh, wrapping but up. Apple the, hasn't um, done anything with VR or gaming yet. Let's not get into like the Apple war again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, but we're not, we're not talking like about that. that Oculus is doing. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's Oculus amazing. Studios, they even, like even the stand, yeah, even yeah. the standalone yeah, thing. Yeah. Hey, Rowdy, Rowdy, stop hating, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just, just finally wrapping up uh, the Lenovo Mirage Solo. So yeah. let's get to the most important thing as well, which is the price, because the price is three hundred and ninety-nine dollars for this headset. So it's it's twice the cost of uh, a thirty-two gigabyte uh, Go, but it does come with sixty-four gigabytes of uh, internal memory. You have the ability to add an SD card to it. Uh, to expand the memory as well. Um, it's obviously got this faster processor, uses inside-out tracking. So it has got some interesting uh, advantages, but it's whether they get used to their full potential will be the interesting yeah. part, I think. Also, we haven't tried that thing yet, just saying. Uh, so no. we would love to, though. Uh, but, um, but... You, you can pre-order it now in the US, and they'll arrive in four to six, uh, four to six oh, weeks. Oh, it's US only. Uh, right now, because oh. they haven't announced any UK or European release yet. Mm. Yeah. Do they actually ship with like a like a... Uh, a, a casket that you can like put it in or something because that's something that <laughs> I still miss. A, did you just say a casket? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, like a little box or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. That's perfect. As in, as in, that's absolutely does, it, perfect. does it ship in a coffin so you can just bury the thing straight away in your yeah. garden? That's basically what you're saying. I, I think I, I, I saw. You mean. I think I saw Bruce uh, uh, right on um, on Twitter using a Polaroid case for his go, as far as I know, and that that worked. I don't so, know if it was a Polaroid case, but you can use like camera cases for. Yeah, it's crazy to do. They didn't deliver Zim, one. Zim has got one there. That's, that's um, what I use. The, um, oh. This is actually perfect fit. I mean, I mean, perfect. Is that like from VR could, cover. Yeah. This is the VR cover. Yeah. One. Yeah. It just goes and it, it just fits over, yeah. and it's like, it's like, yeah, it's a perfect fit. These guys are always coming in handy, right? I mean, it's yeah, they are. Well, what, they they is didn't even knew about uh, the go yet, and it works. Is it for the Rift originally, or no? It's for the VR originally. Yeah, I I actually also bought one this week, a carry case um, called a uh, hermit shell, uh, and it's a medium one, and you can actually get a controller in there and a battery pack as well. But I'm going to cover that later on in another video. Oh, nice. So okay. um, so let's talk about um, let's move on. Let's talk about the Tesla suit because Nathy a couple of weeks ago went and tr checked out this like yes. space age suit, right? <laughs> you know, everyone's been uh, like uh, talking about this kind of technology since Ready Player One. Obviously, Wade Watts got to sort of don this like epic suit where he could actually feel like people touching him in the metaverse and this is something that's actually happening right now right Nathy? like they're actually developing this technology yes. right now yes um so where did you go and, and what did you uh, think of this uh, new technology yeah so i went to uh hamburg in in germany and there was a, a vr ar event there that you could go to and, and meet developers the the devs from elevator to the moon were there with some mm. new stuff and uh there was a, a, a 360 camera and uh, there were some some uh, headset developers too that were working on like uh, cardboards and all kinds of stuff from from high end to low end to well let's say the Tesla suit where you're really going to a spot where it's almost unreachable for most people at this moment but trust me it is it is coming um, but it, it's funny that when I uh, met the the people uh, from Tesla suit the the first thing I said like. Uh, you guys have the first uh, Ready Player One suit, right? I mean, everyone calls it like the Ready Player One suit, the haptic suit. And then they said, um, when we watched the movie, uh, we saw Wade Watts uh, buying the suit in, in, in the shop in the Oasis, right? They said like, oh, that's just one of our older prototypes. <laughs> so apparently they have a much more advanced version of what 
well, Wade Watts is using uh, in the movie, but uh, it's not lighting up, though. I mean, in, right. in Ready Player One, you see that he feels something and it lights up. I mean, that's kind of hard to make right now, and I don't think that's the, the main priority. But uh, they said that the developers were, like, uh, uh, testing things out also with lights, and, and I mean, they also like the idea of Ready Player One. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I tried to soothe, and... Uh, it was a it was a very strange experience because first of all they were um, well setting up the, the the suit and how I was reacting to it um, so they could control my 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 arms they could just press some buttons on their laptop and my fingers were moving and they they could just press uh, buttons on the laptop on certain body parts and then that stuff was just moving and I didn't do anything they could just do it themselves so, so it, was it almost like sending like electrical pulses yeah, yeah, to like, were, like parts like, of your yeah, yeah, they were muscles to my muscles that then just moved um and they they were testing that because some people don't feel that much so they need to uh put it on a stronger level so they were right. just testing that and uh and then i i was uh, allowed to play a game um, I was I was in an office and uh, there was there was a fire. People started panicking and I had to uh, um, activate the uh, uh, how do you call it like the the the, the system that like you the know water sprinklers. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the water sprinklers. Yeah. So uh, I was trying to grab like a a switch and I wanted to turn some buttons around, but since there was some electricity involved, I I, I just felt that. So I had to turn my head in a certain way to get around it, and then I could turn it. Uh, can, can I ask? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Since, I mean, this is a, a little bit my my field of study. Since I, I work with uh, with EMGs and like electromuscular activity and uh, transcranial magnetic simulation, mm -hmm. were they using magnets in the suit to simulate those electrical currents? Well, that's a good one. I haven't really uh, I haven't really taken that much. Because I know what well, we, for example, do in the lab is like we place certain magnets on, on your arm, uh, like yeah. a, a very strong magnetic pulse, which then trans, transforms into electrical currents that runs around your nerves. So mm -hmm. by doing that, you can actually stimulate your, your a certain mm -hmm. type of finger. They, they, you weren't, can... they weren't really putting something on my arms, but I'm sure it's like built in there in the and touching in your the skin. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's like a patch then probably that is attached to that transforming yeah. like an electrical current to your arm. And then you, you can because we, we can like make a full risk like flex and you can you can't do anything about that. Or like, no. uh, you know what they do with a doctor when you test like your reflexes? Yeah. We can do that by just putting like an, a, a, a mag magnetic stimulation on your on your brain, activating that specific <laughs> part. So your, wow. your lack will pop up. So, yeah, you can do crazy stuff with that kind of stuff. There is a, a YouTube video series um, where they use uh, a TENS machine. I think they use that for, is it? Yeah, for pregnancy, pregnant women. Birth, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But, but what it does is it does this like pulsing thing, right? Yeah. Where it does the same thing. So it's funny, like people are eating cereal or whatever, and it's fecking them up, like, you know, they're throwing cereal over their shoulder or whatever, trying yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's almost like those ab belts that don't work, you know, where you just kind of, so, so you can get a six pack by sitting there, you know, it's the same sort of technology. They're sending electrical <laughs> yes. pulses. Um, but interestingly, Nathie, like you say, you know, they could control sort of like all your, most, your, your muscle spasms, but you mentioned about heat and electricity as well. Like, does it have that capability as well? So you can actually yes. feel the heat? Yes. So I, I, I turned on the, the, the sprinklers and then I, I started moving more. I could also feel people walking by. Now, that's not really something you want to use later on, I guess, because it doesn't make any sense. I usually can't feel someone walking by if they are not touching me but i could feel someone just just walk by and 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 just feel it through my arm so they were kind of uh, rushing past you yeah and then the the, the ceiling uh, collapsed and i could feel it on my back and it started to get a little hot so then i used a a fire extinguisher to put the fire uh, down and I, I could feel all of that. Um, so wow. it, 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 yeah. i know it, it sounds it sounds mind blowing but it it I think that if the, the experiences get more realistic, because this was just a demo, of course, then it, it, it will match up very nicely. It will. Did yeah. they actually ask you if you have any kind of like uh, medical conditions before you like try the suit? Like, I don't know, oh, like, because yeah. if you have like a pacemaker oh, yeah, yeah. or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, there are certain things that when you have them, you don't want to put this suit on. No, no, it's not very smart. Right. It can be so dangerous. Like if you had a heart condition, for example, oh, like yeah. a rally set or a pacemaker, it yeah. might mess it up a little bit. I, yeah. I, I don't think you want to do that. No, that's that's yeah. that's pretty risky. But this um, uh, this suit, 
Um, they said they were going to produce it for around like, I don't know, a, a couple of hundred uh, companies right now. It's it's really for the, the companies, for the developers and not really yeah. for the consumers. That makes sense. Um, and their, their waiting list is also very long. It takes them around maybe uh, five months right now to make you a suit if you are like uh, getting added to the list right now. So there is yeah. a high demand for these suits and they, they offer different uh, um, sizes from like uh, X, uh, S to large to, you know, every everything is like possible. The, they can they can change up the colors. They can put your logo on there already. Um, but it's so nice that they are opening uh, up to everyone now and then they show it because usually these kind of products or uh, like haptic suits, gloves, it, it's it's really hard to get your hands on that and mm -hmm. and they are really uh, out there to hear feedback from everyone well yeah. it's in such an early stage of development mm -hmm. I, I, I just can, looked I it can... up actually uh, they they use two electro stimulation systems they use a uh, transcutaneous electrical neural stimulation and also electrical muscle stimulation so they don't use any any max of course you will have magnetic fields but not uh no. so it's electrical don't pulses use like electrical pulses yeah. electrical and i i can see the question on zim's face uh so nathy do they have the pants to go with this like is it just jacket yes. or is there pants yes i i only tried the the, the jacket um uh, <laughs> i did I'm they try not... to stimulate you in a certain area i i think it's i think it's possible right but uh, they didn't allow, they didn't give you the pants to try no no um i did tell them like this would be uh, uh working really well maybe in combination of a treadmill and then they told me that um I, I, it's kind of hard like i'm trying to play russian roulette here of what i can say what i can't say because the developer was super excited and he he told me a lot of really really cool stuff and uh but but they said that you don't need a treadmill with this suit there is something that triggers this suit that will allow you to always keep on walking like in an infinite space like zim mentioned before in that unseen uh, the uh, that game you know yeah uh, uh, it's diplomacy. using a trick yeah it's using right. a trick that lets you feel like you're always walking around and it never stops so right. yeah so, uh, so just 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 to sort of like re so so you can feel things so it can make your arm move yes. and 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 things like that but you can also feel heat and cold as well yeah and, and, I, I can uh, already and there are i can already the see zim I can already see Zim using this in his Oculus Go in like a next <laughs> video. I like. <laughs> Cute. I did actually speak with them in LA, so I did get to speak to them, and I found right. that the the suit itself was perhaps lighter, uh, but more reptilian uh, than I was expecting it to feel. So it feels mm. a bit like slippery, um, and also feels a bit like a wetsuit material. Um, and mm. one of the things they commented was they said that the the weight of the suit, which I didn't think was that heavy, it felt like a like a heavy leather jacket um, right. in terms of you know feeling it. But they were saying they want to cut that. Their target is to cut that weight by half uh, when they're doing this. But the, the pants, what about Austin, I did ask them. And so they do have uh, pants to go with the, the suit. Because my first comment was, oh, well, you know, you're not full body. And they're like, no, we are. We have pants. We got the jacket. Um, but they don't at the moment have <laughs> transducers or whatever in the crotch area. Mike, I did ask them that question. Oh, um, thanks. <laughs> well, well, thanks. What about that. sweat? Like, is, is, a, is a suit like airy or is it like... Yeah, uh, yeah I think like, that'd be a problem. I think I think it'd be clammy in there, to be honest. But Nathy, did you get a feel for one. that? Like, how did it break? No, I haven't played that much with it, but yeah, it was like like rubber and, and, and all kinds of like materials that, that I had to like put on because I, I wasn't wearing a shirt under that, by the way. I have to really go full nude to, oh, to yeah, like yeah. uh right yeah. so you have to wear it on your bare skin yes yes right, right. Yeah. That's how um, of course but uh, uh i i might have more information later down the road because they said i was welcome at their factory to see how their suits are getting made and to try more experiences too because what i played was just a small sneak peek of the full picture they said they had some really mind-blowing things in store uh but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So there you have it confirmed. We're going to be doing the show live next week from the Tesla factory. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? That could yeah. be fun. Uh, yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. Like, what are your concerns? But, uh, I'm curious, guys, because like for me, it's the API, right? Because again, it's this hardware thing again. If there's not, if not, if one of the big platforms like Oculus, for instance, don't pick this up and establish an API that developers can lock into, how's this mm. thing going to be used? Yeah, but, true, yeah. true. I think my biggest concern is like, uh, is it tethered in any way, or like, did you have a battery pack to power it? Or that's a good mm. question. But, um, but the thing is that they're aiming it at developers now, like yeah, uh, yeah, to to comment on them. So uh, they're aiming it at um, not at developers, at like oh. you know 
big, uh, how you say it, yeah, like, industrial uh, arcades and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. More, more like that kind of stuff. I, I think I think it's it's the work that is mostly uh, done here is R and D. We are just research and development that will eventually get implemented as well. Yeah. Just like we've seen with a lot of those virtual reality devices that are all being like developed, and then nothing really comes of it on a yeah. on a commercial yeah. level. But it's still really cool stuff. I, I think they, I think they, they, they are uh, on the on the on the right uh, way right now. On the yeah. on the, because uh, they they also said that uh, if you if you put the suit into like a washing machine, it, it still worked afterwards. They tried to wash it a couple of times and still works. So awesome. I mean, there are so many things that they are now working on that will be so handy later on. Uh, yeah. They also said that the healthcare sector is very interested in this too. Of uh, and, uh, therapy with this device. That of course they know that gaming will bring them some more publicity like you have seen with, for example, Beat Saber. If you pull, uh, pull a nice video, then people are going to go crazy. And, and they were just laughing about the Ready Player One stuff. They, they just love that. It's so they didn't quick... want to do like I I had the feeling that they liked that, but they didn't want it to be too much like tied to Ready Player I One. Think that's smart. Um, and uh, but still, people call it that way, and 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 mm -hmm. they're not gonna say you're not allowed to say it. But they want to, of course, build their own brand. Makes uh, sense. Mike, answering your question, um, I think I think it was an anchor, uh, like twenty milliamp hour, twenty k milliamp hour um, battery pack that goes into the back. And, and oh right, yeah. the sleeve that you and just it, plug and in. It's... And it's a wireless connection between you and the PC, is it? There's no connection yeah. to the... I don't think there's a connection between the suit and... I actually don't know how that works. Well, it must be wireless, right? Yeah, it's wireless and they, they use software where you could see like like a body, but they could also measure like performance of how someone moves and how strong someone is and things like that. Probably so they, they they were getting a lot of information from, from the suit as well. Um, on, on the pricing, I can't really, can't really say that much, but honestly... It's not gonna work with many things if you really want to. Let's say it's not for prosumers, not at no, all. No, no, no. Far no, we, from we, that. And maybe it's gonna take years. four or five years yeah. before this is actually something you you uh, want to buy as like an early adopter and not yeah. as a consumer. Uh, so, I, but it, it's there and it it, it it exists and they are uh, working on this for mm -hmm. a couple of years now. This is not just them. It, it's really something they have been working on for a long time. And I'm glad someone is working on it. It's very exciting technology, and it's clearly where we're going to be going yeah. in the future. I think. Yeah. We got the, a question from the chat. Uh, does it map your body position like a Kinect, for example? Ooh. Uh, well, it will be able to do like a, a, a motion capture, so it will be able to capture your actual like. So you could use it for it's video for games as well to uh, make animations. Yeah, they they said that they said that. No. So that. But that's that's why I'm telling you, like you don't need a treadmill anymore because they might use like your position in a way where it plays with your environment. So I don't really know what that means, but it sounds cool. Yeah, it does. So unless we've got any other questions about the Tesla suit, I'll move on to yeah. uh... the the thing is like there are people asking how much will the suit cost, but I, I don't think I know what no, I, I I did get a price, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it. But let's yeah. say it's it's really expensive. It's it's. I but mean, it's just just for development purposes and, and industry yeah. right now to develop with it, right? It's not for anyone else. Um, cool. cool. Sorry, so uh, let's move on to our final topic, which is Red Matter. Uh, this is a new Oculus title coming soon. It's an Oculus exclusive, um, but it's uh, it's a, it looks like a cool game. Uh, it's made by uh, a company called Vertical Robot, a studio uh, based in Madrid. Uh, they've got some uh, good development uh, pedigree as well. They've previously worked on games such as uh, Castlevania, uh, Lords of Shadow, and Spec Ops The Line. I don't know if any of you guys have ever played oh, Spec yeah, Ops The Line. Yeah. That was a really cool game. Um, <laughs> wow. So yeah, they've got some really uh, cool pedigree there in terms of game development. Um, and in this game, you take on the role as Agent Epsilon, an astronaut uh, tasked with investigating an abandoned base on one of the moons of Saturn. Uh, they, uh, the development studio also um, made an Oculus Go title, which is called uh, Daedalus. 
which is a cool uh, puzzle platformer. So if you're interested, you can go and check out that game as well. But they've been working on uh, Red Matter for some time now because uh, we first saw it way back in uh, October last year, uh, Oculus Connect 4. Uh, I didn't unfortunately get a chance to check the game out. I, I don't know how I managed to miss it, uh, but you got to you got to play it, right, Zim? Yeah, I got a good uh, got a good probably 20, 25 minutes with the team as well. So um, the thing I'll say that I think stands out that will not be apparent from the trailer that we're running is um, is the spider claws that you have. Yes. There is yes. the the control mechanism with this game. Mm. Uh, they 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 intelligently everything you grab you're grabbing through another pair of claws and those claws yes. grab the object whether it's paper or it's pushing a button and and what that does oddly it's a, it's a strange kind of psychological effect is that it feels like you're grabbing stuff like um, because you're grabbing under the controllers and that feels sound and you're using the grabbers to grab things if you feel like there's no question in your mind that, that oh I am grabbing that thing um, yeah. so it, it's a very like I'd say that control mechanism I yeah. think once this comes out uh, and, and depending on the success of the game. But I think that control mechanism is something other developers should look at and actually yeah. bring into their titles. Um, so what, it's, it's, it's so go. No, I'm just going give to a, give a... So the game itself, I was going to say, I got quite excited about it because you're on this planet, you feel quite alone. And um, although it's kind of wandering around some quite intelligent puzzles, um, I, I, I would definitely place it as a halfway step towards abduction. Like, it, it, these aren't dumb puzzles. There, there, there are some intelligent puzzles in this. So you, between the grabbers, that it felt like I was playing Half-Life 2 for the first time. Uh, mm. And so that, that was a very positive thing. And so I'm quite excited about this title to see. I think their yeah. limiting factor, I would imagine, would be what's, how much content are we going to get here? Is it going to be a four-hour, mm. a six-hour, an eight-hour game? Oh. Um, if it's only, you know, an hour and a half, then... At this level of quality, I can probably still accept that, but I think more people yeah. would be, you know, they yeah. want something a little bit chunkier. So let's see. What, what, I, what I think is interesting, I haven't played this game at all. I'm just looking at the trailer is that, first of all, they are using the shape of a touch controller. So yeah. that uh, adds uh, up to the immersion, I'm sure. And I haven't seen many games using an actual no. Oculus touch shape. So I, that that's 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 a nice one plus something i also noticed i think zim you know more about this like i see people moving in this trailer but i see a, a little like pirate line like like on a map you know where you know where you're going yeah. is it like free movement system or is it like a an on rails kind of like teleportation yeah when system? i when i played it i believe it was point to point teleportation but you could teleport anywhere it's one of those things where like you've got a pool table worth of space and you can set your teleport mark anywhere you go. I What I don't remember is, was it blink teleport? Was it, you know, sped up te teleport? Um, and also I believe there were space sequences where I had like a jetpack and you were floating mm -hmm. to an extent. I can't, I'm, my, my memory on that, on the movement system is a little bit, uh, yeah. a little bit hazy, but what they're showing in the video obviously is, is you've selected your point and I think your jetpack takes you from A to B. Uh, so to speak, so you, you kind of say, put me there, um, and, then, and then you move. So it's more of a slow version of what we've come to, what's the term for, um, like what Doom and Co. use, where you're, like you're not blink, blink teleporting. Like dash teleportation. Dash teleporting. Like so dash. it's like a yeah. slow dash. Yeah, uh, dash. Yeah. Drift so it's funny, because um, what the, the way that they handled the hands was something that I, I picked up on the trailer almost straight away. And like you say, because they've got the astronauts' gloves holding touch controllers, which actually turn out to be your tools because like like zim explained the, the the touch controllers in the game actually transform into different tools right that yes. you use to manipulate in the world and like you say it's a very clever design choice because you're holding the touch controllers you can't avoid that so you might as well make them feel like they're actually tools that you're using uh, so when you look down it's not just your bare hand you are holding a touch controller that transforms yeah. into a tool yeah. so yeah it's a very small they, they've, uh, they've been asking in the chat is there a story reasoning for using uh, the claws as well do you know remember. anything on that um, we do have i think I, I saw her in chat earlier tatiana from the dev team uh, was actually in chat so maybe she can answer that mm -hmm. but i would just That's say hard. that there's, there's there's places where you take those claws and you're doing some very delicate stuff like with with light bulbs for instance uh, you know screwing a light bulb in or yeah. a breaker circuit or something and 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 it feels great feels yeah. honestly great like I, I really when i first played that i was like other devs are going to definitely copy this yeah and like you say the, the puzzles some of the puzzles look very intricate like there's small little pieces you need to put together and that's where probably they came about that design choice because it is very sort of small and intricate movements that you have to make also prevents controller clash 
because they're mm-hmm. spacing your hands that little bit more away from the thing you're dealing with, you don't bump your controllers together. So it, right. it, it saves the immersion break. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like uh, Someone is asking in the chat if it's a, uh, a game that really makes use out of room skill, or is it more a, a standing experience? Uh, I'd imagine being an Oculus title, it probably it yeah. does both. You know, like uh, one step it probably... in any direction, I would have said. Yeah, so you you know, if you've got a three sensor, four sensor setup, then you can maybe use room scale, or if you've just got two sensors, then you could just teleport and rotate, snap on the stick. Exactly. Um, that's generally how most Oculus titles tend to release nowadays. Uh, but I like the fact that it's got a cool story driven narrative, and I think that's one of the things that I've really kind of missed just recently. It feels like there's been a bit of a, a lull in terms of like real sort of like story driven games, and that's why previous episode when we talked about Defector, I was quite excited about that, which is like a spy sort of game mm. because. I'm really like craving like a story to pull me through a, a VR title right now, and we don't seem yeah. to get that. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested in this mm. one. I, I love sci-fi as well, and that's why I didn't particularly sort of get into Skyrim. As I mentioned before, I'm not really a kind of a fantasy guy, so this game really sort of interests me, and I'm really uh, looking. Forward and it to looks it looks now. visually very appealing, very appealing. Gra- graphically gorgeous, uh, yeah. Very... There's a certain art style that I really like as well. The other thing mm. I would say, and this is just a comment from hitting so many conventions in that, because um, I like this when when this when this spins off, but. Um, when you meet a dev team who's so like warm and welcoming and you know, smiles all around, like these guys were like instant family. And so I just have to call that out because I really, really enjoyed my time with them. You know, and it was, yeah. as I said, Mike, it's a shame you didn't get a chance to, to try it out. But at the same time, yeah. you know, having a virgin experience for this, I think is going to be a nice thing. Yeah, I, I remember oh. vividly seeing it there, but there was so many mm-hmm. other stuff going on at OC4. Like, what like, are you doing? Yeah, like the uh, closed doors, huh? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> uh, we so, got Tatiana hey, back in the chat as well. The Palmer, oh, right? it's Tatiana's in the chat. Time. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah. yeah, maybe she can answer some of the questions uh, from the chat. Yeah. Uh, so the question, the of... main question, Tatiana, that was uh, that was just asked there was um, the controllers themselves. Is there a story reason why you're using the grippers as Rules. opposed to your hands? Yeah, is there yeah. A, is there an excuse? I suppose yeah. that's given in the story. So while we wait for a response, um, just to give you a bit of information about when it's coming out and the price, uh, the game is due for release on uh, May the 24th and is an Oculus exclusive, like I said before. Uh, it's available for pre-order if you wish. Uh, it would normally cost uh, $24.99 in British pounds, $29.99 in US dollars. Uh, but I think if you pre-order it, you get a small discount. But that's really up to you at the end of the day. This is this is really the first time I'm not wanna that, that I don't want to use Revive because I, it would mess up my controllers. Like yeah. you look at your controllers, then it's like, huh? Yeah, what it is happening? Like it does not compute. Does not compute. Usually you can kind of like play and, and and just just think like, should I use a Rift or a Vive this time? But but this one you really want to go with a, it's with a very a smart move. It, yeah. it is. It is. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's looking like this title is going to bridge the gap, you know, as a, as a cool title to play, b- b- you know, before our next big release. Because we haven't had a big release like this in a while, so it's it's very welcome indeed in my eyes. This, this, this controller you're using in this game kind of looks like a Swiss knife where there are, like, mm. different tools, like... Yeah, it transforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's funny. I, I don't see an answer on, on your, like question yet so oh here we go okay. just just in time uh so uh she says i don't want to spoil too much of the story but these are your tools to explore this facility you may find something there okay yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah that's the thing wow like, the, the, the trailer kind of hints it as well and the synopsis of the game kind of hints at it like you know you've got to investigate what's going on at this base and it's kind of got a mysterious dark secret that you can uncover but will you be able to handle the 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 sort of answer when you eventually find it that's kind of what they say in the synopsis. So I'm sure it's going to have a dark twist to it, and it's going to be very exciting indeed. Definitely, it's eerie. Um, I would just say that that was, that was the. It, it's not as happy yeah. as Half Life Two. Yeah, like you say, you you probably feel very isolated on this. this yeah, that this was place. that that was yeah. the nice vibe that I got. Like when they started you off in front of that giant door on this like yeah. Martian surface, I think it was. Yeah, you just feel very alone. Yeah. I don't know why, but everything Russian just reminds me of Metro. This this game also gives me a little bit of a Metro. Yeah. Uh, I can't help it. And then the the diving suits just remind me of Bioshock, of course, because I've been brainwashed by Bioshock. But hey, there were even people me, saying uh, this looks like Arctic One, just because yeah, that is also so, like yeah. Russian or Ukrainian. Yeah. Don't or... say Rowdy. Don't call it Metro. You know, just just a warning. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> 
so there we have it guys and girls we're going to wrap this week's show up i hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have just to remind you it's a weekly vr ar and mr talk show live streamed every saturday of course on nathy's youtube channel you can tune into the show live at the new times of 7 p.m in europe 6 p.m in the uk 12 o'clock midday in central us if you missed the live show you can catch up with the re-upload on my channel virtual reality oasis every sunday or check out the audio only version which is available on google play music and on itunes thanks again for being part of the show this week we've had a blast and we'll see you again on next week's episode until then bye-bye bye